and welcome to the show on today's Nurburgring Challenge. I've got the Ferrari 360 Challenge Stradale, one of my favourite handling cars on Forza 5 and on Forza 4 and on pretty much any other game I've ever driven this car in. <laughs> I really like the 360 Challenge. This is a very, very good car to drive and I was actually looking forward to uh, driving this around the Nurburgring. Now the challenge itself is to try and lap the green hell as quickly or quicker than the time set by the car in real life. In the case of the Ferrari, the time is a 7.56, so that's the time that I could find, which is not going to be particularly hard in, in this case. Uh, the NSX that I drove around last week did a 7.55, and the Ferrari we have here is rated quite a bit higher than the Honda. The Honda is a high-ish C-Class, the Ferrari is a fairly low A-Class, there's well over 100 PI difference in these two. So yeah, I should be able to go, I should, I should certainly be able to beat the time. I was curious though as to how quick I could go around here and whether I could beat the Lamborghini, considering the Lamborghini is a little bit higher rated than this uh, as well. But this, as I said, is a phenomenally good car to drive. It really is one of the best on Forza 5 that I've driven. Uh, completely stock uh, for for this run. The the time the car did in real life says it was run on sport tyres, but this car does already come up with one upgrade of tyre. And seeing as it wasn't going to be that hard to beat the time anyway, I thought solid. I will just go with this car as stock. Um, there are very very little complaints I can have about this car. There really is the only one, the only thing I had problem with is the curbs. 360 did not like the curbs around here. Uh, for, for whatever reason, this is the worst car I've had for dealing with them. You put a wheel on the curb, and you are going to have a problem, as you saw there in that first section. Everywhere else, this car was incredible. Through these corners, I think it's about 120 miles an hour on the exit. It has so, so much grip. It's, it's quite unbelievable how well this car sticks to the road. This next corner is the fastest that I've been through it in any car. 140 miles an hour it can hold through here. Uh, this is a terrifying corner. You, you can't see, you brake and you turn in and you believe your car will hold onto the road and the, Fer the Ferrari can. Uh, it has got an incredible amount of grip. The brakes are very, very good. This car gets stopped very quickly. Um, it's, it is a joy to drive. This car, I, I really recommend, I think it's 170,000 credits. I really recommend you have a go with this vehicle. It's honestly, I, I would say this is pretty much about as perfect a handling car as you can get. It does not let go of the road through the slow speed, the high speed corners. Uh, it's not the most powerful, like statistically speaking, it's not massively impressive. 409 horsepower, 275 torques, fairly light, 2,800 pounds, but again, none of that is massively impressive. 0 to 60 is 4.1, 0 to 100, 9.7. It doesn't even get to 200 miles an hour. But it's the way this car drives, the way this car handles. I mean, around a track, I, it's pretty damn quick. And it's, just, it's a really very good car. It, it's certainly worth 170,000 credits because uh, it is an absolute joy to drive. I was finding I could go flat out through corners um, in this, the same corners that I could with the NSX. But this is quite a bit quicker than the NSX, just to give you an idea of how much grip this car has. It's, yeah, it's, it's very, very good. Uh, through all of these corners, but I, you just can't touch the curves. Touch the curves, you have problems. I'm not sure. It's possible that this car would, I, I would assume this car would have stiffer suspension, more track orientated suspension than the likes of the NSX and the Viper. Maybe that has a part to play in this. Possibly. Uh, it, it does not like the curves. I had to do, I had to, <laughs> had to do my best to keep off them. Uh, yeah, otherwise you would be sort of dragged into a, either dragged wide or dragged along them. It, it was a bit of a pain. Uh, but once you got the hang of that, it really was a very easy car to drive around the track. Now, coming on to the, the, the real life times and comparing them to here, because uh, it, it's not an exact science, the NSX was pretty damn tough to beat that time. It was, that, was a, that was a real challenge to get that around the track. And I don't think I could have got that much faster. Uh, but of course, some of the other cars, I've gone an awful lot quicker. So, you know, is, is it Forza that's not accurate or, or quite what it is, is I'm not sure. I think Forza is pretty damn good on the track front and the car front. The likes of the NSX is damn close. 
There are some times that I'm not sure I'll be able to beat, like the Corvette ZR1, the ACR Viper. I don't know if I can do a 712 with an ACR Viper. I genuinely don't. The, the Corvette ZR1 time is also damn fast for that car, and I'm not sure that I can do that time. But then we look at something like the 360 Challenge, and that's pretty damn easy. I think I, I think I did that. I think I beat the time on the first lap I drove at the Nurburgring from a standing start. Um, so yeah, I think the variable is more in the real life times than it is in the game. I think the game is pretty good. The real life times, of course, there are many many variables in that track condition. Uh, you know, is the track hot or cold? If you have, I guess, if you ran very early mornings, the track was very cold. And, you know, if you're losing just 0.1 of a second per corner because of that, that's a huge loss by the end of the lap because there are so many corners around this track. I think most of the times that I've been looking at are from cars running on a on sort of a closed day, if you like, but some of them might have been done when there are other vehicles going around. I don't think they're supposed to do that, but some of them might have done. And, you know, tyres are another thing. I'm trying my best to match them up as best I can. Uh, car condition, possibly. I mean, I'm presuming they'll be driving uh, fairly well, decent cars, but uh, they might not be completely brand new ones that they're running. Uh, what was the other thing? I have completely forgot. I was getting a big slide going on uh, <laughs> in the Ferrari. Oh yeah, the other thing is the sort of the number of laps that are done. Now, of course, the cars that, that, that are timed that go around the ring, I'm sure they're driven by professional racing drivers, but it takes time to get used to a car. Even if you've driven many laps of the Nurburgring, it, the, your first lap with the car is never going to be as quick as subsequent laps. So if the driver has only got one lap to do uh, a, a time in, they're going to be a bit more cautious because they don't necessarily know what the car can do. So yeah, I think the variable uh, is more to do with the real life time, as there are some phenomenal times that I will struggle to beat, and then <laughs> there are some like this one that um, don't pose much of a challenge. The, the the car was pretty excellent around here, to be honest. As I said, the grip, the levels of grip you get from this 360 are <laughs> absolutely insane. It's flat out all the way downhill. A little bit scary with some of the bumps when you are absolutely flat out through here. Car gets chucked around from side to side. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's off the ground at some points through there. That's, that's pretty daunting as you're, you're turning the car in. And <laughs> it's, it's jumping through the air. But still, it's got enough grip for you to get away with it. As we come up towards the end of the lap. I uh, got a, this quarter a bit better. I, I'm really disliking that quarter. It's a funny one because it's slightly banked. You can take a lot more speed through there than you think you can. So you can chuck the car in and let the, some of the banking do the work and you can actually carry more speed through there. This final corner is also pretty nasty. It's very narrow. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it, it's a very fast corner. It's sort of a dab on the brakes, a downshift. But the, it's a very narrow section through there. Uh, I'm still not quite used to that. I'm used to, I think, on Forza 4, the few times I drive Nürburgring. That was that felt more, was much wider on there. On here, a lot more claustrophobic. You've got to be a lot more precise. Then, of course, we've got a very long straight. The Ferrari gets up to about 170 as it comes up the hill and then pick up speed down the other side. It's, uh, again, it's quite a steep hill going up here. Uh, easily flat out, though, through this next corner. No problems at all in this car. This next bit is also scary. 180 miles an hour as we come into the first part. Uh, absolutely flat out. Break as you go past the first tyre wall to make it around the next part of the corner. Uh, and then make sure you don't overshoot the next bit. Yeah, this car is very quick. Lots of grip in, in this one as we round the final corner. And it is a run to the line for the 360 Challenge. I absolutely love driving this car around here. Great fun. Uh, yeah, it really wasn't too hard, provided you keep it off the kerbs. It's a uh, it's a very very forgiving car. This one and the back end does not let go at all unless you do something really stupid. You have to be really <laughs> really far too fast into a corner for it to misbehave. So yeah, the 360 Challenge is a phenomenal car. My lap time with the Ferrari was a seven minutes thirty point three. Two seconds off the Lamborghini's time. I think it's some 26 seconds faster than the real life time. I think this loses out to the Lamborghini, perhaps only on the straight. Around the rest of the course, it was pretty even. But on the straight, the Lamborghini just has the power and can pull away. And that's where most of the time is lost. Yeah, this is a very good car. Really, really do recommend you give it a go if you haven't tried driving the 360 Challenge before. It's a phenomenal car. And I, yeah, I really enjoy driving at the Nurburgring. It is, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's certainly worth the money. And yeah, it's uh, I think it's a good car for perhaps learning 
to drive kind of A-class vehicles. Very forgiving, very consistent. So yeah, give it a go if you haven't before. Anyway, that is it for this video, guys. So thank you very much for watching. Next time, we'll be driving something a little bit faster. So until then, goodbye.